And then you've got what's <laughs> Nightmare Snowball Light Strike Array. And a decent amount of damage, you know, base damage on Bane and Lena is pretty good. Tusk isn't too shabby. Yeah, hell, you can even, um, in this sort of scenario, you can probably just lead with Snowball and Enjoy try and sleep the Abaddon. You can even go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, yeah, at level 2. I think maybe at level 1, yeah, you do go Brain Sap. Just because the pure burst damage is so nice. Um, just because you should, with the Snowball, be able to land a Light Strike Array. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. They're going to place a ward. Now, this should be fairly obvious if they see the trees cut, that the ward is going to be here. But this is a, a cool idea. If they had actually placed it a little bit higher, maybe they didn't want to, to reveal the trees were cut. But they would have gotten themselves good vision upwards and downwards. But... This ward actually seeing the ramp is, is decently nice. Most of the time you see this ward um, placed down here, right below this tree area. That's countered out by the counter ward, but so will this ward if they see it. But I'm sure they will. Anybody who comes over and checks... Actually, I, uh, I'm, I'm now sure. I'm going to change my mind. Because I think this ward is garbage. The <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I, I think so. It, it, if the regular counter ward spot, which I can almost guarantee, which is placed in the, the left-hand side of this tree, it definitely sees it. Like it's it's in an it's in an arc like yeah. that, so I, I but, feel like that's pretty garbage. But there's also the ward spot over here, so it could cost an extra sentry. Yeah, I, I guess for me it's like unless that catches. Compare this ward to this ward, right? This ward would actually be able to see in the jungle area, yeah. still see down the ramp. Yeah, I don't like it. We'll see. We'll we'll see what problems it causes for them. Yeah. And they're not going to go aggro. That was just the uh, the posturing to get that little, little ward down. Yeah. J4, the pile I die special. No enfeeble level 1, but he's getting in the face of this TA very early. Yeah, just using his uh, superior stats to harass down the TA when he's burned through a fraction, go for a brain sap. And meanwhile, the rotations actually occur. Complexity had to keep their clockwork now to the bottom lane. Nice block out there from Cheshire Cat. This is a beautiful one that will allow him to get a lot of damage onto Z-Freak with the help of those creeps. This does mean no snowball for now. Winter Wyvern easily rebuffed by the combination of J4 and uh, Barash on the Queen of Pain. It's difficult for him to go back in for another Arctic Burn now. Seeing on 200 HP, you, you could potentially even have a blink forward from the Quop. I think you probably just leave this lane. Yeah, I mean, you show up with Arctic Burn, you use it, and you get out. Yeah. I don't think you really... I mean, even, even using it now, he's potentially in trouble. Yeah, they're actually going to go on a J4 here, turn around Brain Sap, get some of that uh, HP back. and Barish actually took a lot of damage from the creeps during that period of time. I think if they'd gone for the Shadow Strike on the Wyvern, maybe they didn't have vision of him, yeah. but that's a kill on the Wyvern instead of... Uh, it, it's, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's either a kill on the Wyvern, which is worth a decent amount, or shutting down the Templar Assassin, forcing, what, a salve to come out? Even more tangos, even. Annoying the hell out of her. It shows your cat's getting a lot as the, uh, offlane tusk. Now, Swindle just got himself a great rune, the regen, when he was low on mana and HP. What a great rune for him to find. Unfortunately, the pull's gonna kind of stop some of his momentum as an offlaner, but... As long as there's no Bane, he should do all right in this lane. And, oh, top lane. Shit, your cat's gonna die here, most likely. Unless he gets a pretty good snowball here to the left-hand side. And he will stay ahead of Z-Freak, so no body-blocking opportunities there. Nice save. Yeah, no real nukes after the chains, either. Mid lane battle still going on. Yeah, this is kind of weird. I just watched Queen of Pain just tank some extra hits from the Winter Wyvern. Uh... Barrage? Bottom lane, Swindle, oh god, he just barely dies. That TP was so close to going out. Swindle, rather unfortunate. You're talking about a half a second of time difference there from giving away first blood and surviving. So Vlad is actually spending the majority of his time just stacking Ancients for the TA. No sentries coming oh, out Oh no, ping to check between the Nightmare as well as the Shadow Strike. They're going to burn through that pretty quickly, but the rocket! Oh, he starts bottling up, he's going to be good. That cold embrace, good time for Vlad to come in. And managed to save the Templar Assassin there completely and almost got the turnaround kill on Barish thanks to the Clockwork Rocket, well placed by Swindle. Just imagine if he had level 3 though. The Queen of Pain dies, the Templar Assassin survives, and that middle lane is then won by complexity. Well, this is a bottle for Quop and TA sitting on 8 last hits. They're being doubled up on in last hits. Bingvincheck's not having a great time. This, this Bane just running him down. Every single time he pops into lane. Swindle's trying to leave some experience from this pull through from Big Num. 
But Lena's got boots and swindles. Even though you're level three, you've gone for two in cogs and one in flare, which I am concerned about. Uh, maybe a misclick? Gotta be a misclick, right? I don't think that's the build. It's gotta be a misclick. There's no way that not having a level of battery assault or going the maxed out rocket flare builds is worth an extra level in cogs. Like, sometimes I understand it against, you know, heroes like Axe, Juggernaut, whatever, if you want to burn through their mana a little bit faster. Yeah. It's understandable, but still not the best. Mm -hmm. Where you can make a conscious, you know, deliberate decision to go for it, but I agree, I think it's... Uh... Yeah, it'd really have to be one of those, like, one-on-one -on -one scenarios that you can get good cog burn, and the mana is incredibly important for the matchup. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not quite sure who that would be against. But it's certainly not against this dual lane, uh, Vlad. Oh, this he seems to be doing all right with this uh, this dual lane on uh, on the side of Arcade. They they like they almost lost their Queen of Pain one point in time, but if you look at just the general control, it's well in the favor of Arcade. They've got 26 and 10 Queen of Pain compared to the 13 and 0 of Ping Check. Oh, definitely. If Ben can make stacks as well, which he is doing, just making sure that he's got something... You know, making stacks isn't just for your one roll or two roll to fall back on. Mm -hmm. It's all for the supports, for the uh, for the experience. Because if you do run dual lanes, if you run an aggressive trial lane or something like that... Oh, no. Oh, dear. This window ends up dying. Yeah, because you, you want to push your supports to level 6, especially something like the Bane with Fiend's Grip against an Ember, mm -hmm. against a TA. That, uh, that amount of control can be really critical. And then you've got, you've got Alina. With a bottle. That's oh, just a cast bottle, actually. I was wondering where she got the money for that. Barash is... He's cruising. Yeah, Swindle blocked down here by Creeps. Are they going to be able to get another kill here? Oh god, he's just shy of the mana. That was definitely a kill. May still be, as Windamounts will be run down. Another kill for the Gyrocopter. Gyro is just such a tough hero in lane. Against some of these melees, if you don't get the good set of cogs that you're looking for. Oh, going up the top on Ziz. Yeah, Ziz, does he have the flame guard ready to go? It's almost up, but it doesn't matter. The magic damage came through, and they finish it up with a little bit of physical. Another pickoff for Arcade, 4 and 0 already. This complexity struggling to find a hold in this game one. This is, this is the trouble. You've got these sort of reactive heroes, but only at a certain point in the game. Mr. Baden needs, uh, needs some levels. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to shield himself and try and run away. The Winter Wild has done a good job, you know, controlling mid lane a little bit just to try and mitigate. <laughs> oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> Bloody hell, Barash. Oh, I've never seen that before. I've seen it get caught in the crossfire, but yeah. actually consciously blinking forward to kill the courier with Sonic Wave. Well, that's fine, whatever. There, there's no way that should work. Snowball stun, Z Freak. He's gonna be going down before he can get off the robotic <laughs> shield. It's always the worst feeling when you get Sonic waved and killed, and the courier's like behind you, just delivered an item to you, and it mm -hmm. gets killed off in the crossfire. But, uh, but yeah, willing to blow your Sonic wave. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, uh, is this up the courier yet? is worth. The last striker I hit, he's got no flame god left, and looks like the Ember Spirit's gonna take a chunk of damage, but they don't have any way to close out the kill. They've got arcanes on Lena though. So, at least, at least Lena's pretty farmed. Yeah, this is really farmed. I mean, you don't even have your level 6 yet. That, that's Like, the Laguna Blade costs so much mana that if you don't have Arcanes as a support Lena, usually you're wandered around. You get, like, the combination, and then you're out of mana entirely. Lena can actually throw, like, can have some sustain in lane and throw a couple of these combos and still have money for the Laguna Blade. Abaddon and Wyvern are roaming. Well, that doesn't feel like a strong combination. I never thought I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd hear myself say these words. Yeah. The roaming duo of Wyvern and Abaddon, they've got some slows. Yeah, they certainly don't have enough kill power, though. TPs uh, are coming in. Arcades. Shisher Cat knows that they're completely out of firepower now, so he's going to make their turnaround on a Z-Freak. They'll be able to burst him down. Now the question is, he's going to be able to stay ahead of Pingvin Check? No, it looks like Vlad himself is just going to be able to right-click him down. Barish was able to take that haste rune, fortunately. And they'll stay ahead of Ziz's rotation as the Ember Spirit. We saw this last night, though. Complexity grouping up as four to try and really stem the flow. Because they're bleeding out here. Six yeah. to one. And well, like, it's very rarely we look at the net worth difference before like 15 minutes, right? But I just want to take a, take a quick look. It, it's over 4,000, eight and a half minutes in. The Jarakop is free farming bot lane, the Queen of Pain, with three and a half K net worth. Plus the kills they've got, they've actually limited the farm of the Ember and the TA. Now these are heroes that can actually fall back into the jungle and... Oh god, Swindle again, the cooldown! Yeah. With the Bane there. 
Brain Sap is available, Tron with the Rocket Barrage, but Swindles will get himself back behind the tier one. So according to um, to the manager, Beef, you know mm -hmm. him, right? Um, he says that um, they're actually playing with six players. Just because the you know Chessy can't play all the matches. Okay. Um, due to his you know his injury in his back. Yeah. So they swap Pingvin check in and out for Chessy. Yeah, I'm guessing so. Okay. I'm guessing that that this is just like all again, just figuring it out as it goes. Oh, oh wow. what a jump! Oh, and Sonic Wave to clean it up. Oh, triple, triple kill for Barrage. <laughs> and an ancient stack. For the yeah. Giant. If they could actually steal this one, which looks yep. like they should be able to. A little full flat cannon with phase boots. They can clear this one out. Ziz is going to come in from behind and try and threaten them. Oh, God, he's going to need so much. He's going to be able to get J4. This thing goes off. Yeah. J4, he barely gets that kill, but now the snowball's going to catch him, and he won't be able to get out after that heavy committal there. Swindle comes in from behind, managed to get a good cog push back there, and they get some additional damage onto the gyrocopter, but not enough for them to ever make a commitment. Swindle doesn't have the HP, the mana, or even the skill build for him to be able to commit for more. And now he's going to get caught out. Quick turnaround there from the gyrocopter. He spies out the clockwork. Cheshire Cat will get ahead of Z Freak. No problem there. At least the Templar Assassin gets some ancient creeps. Silver lining. Silver lining. Yes. Yeah. This cloud isn't just gray. The thunderstorm coming and complexity gonna get caught in the eye of it. It's a bad one. Level four. This, this is the biggest problem, you know. The clockwork not getting level six yet, so they can't play that reactive game I was talking about, where ten minutes in they want the clock behind the TA or the Ember, just to jump in to Radiant's stop things like this happening. Because a hook shot there would have been amazing for them. Mm -hmm. Jack be caught. <laughs> oh, <laughs> still All right, not sure if that's going to be good or bad. As complexity starts streaming forward with Swindle going that big number, they do manage to get the line strike array. A little bit extra damage. This comes in from the side, takes out one, but here comes a gyrocopter. Good cogs pushback though. That's going to be able to buy some time, but still. Diz is stuck in the middle of all these heroes. No real escape for him. Swindle's the only one who gets out of that scenario. He does have a hook shot ready to go, as well as a rocket. Looks like he may go back in the middle lane as they're trying to dive on a Vlad right now. He's got a splinter blast. We'll get it on to Barish. If they land this hook shot, no, it's shy. He can't get it. And the Winter Wyvern dies to the gyrocopter. Ping Vincek can't really get there. On a TA 14 to 3. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Complexity, they needed to weather the storm and farm jungle, farm ancients. But I think it's long gone past that point. Yeah, it certainly is. At this stage, you've got to you've got to meet Arcade head on. I mean, Barash yeah. is just going in. Yeah. He's got Sonic Wave in a second. Like, you honestly have to, as Complexity, I feel, group up as five. Kind of forget about farming stacks and trying to bring yourself into the game that way. Smoke up and just go for that, you know, Hail Mary hook shot onto someone, blow them up and try and get the numbers advantage. Because if you can kill off the gyro here, that's a big streak. Kill off the Queen of Pain, limit her progression. We've seen it before, where Queens, uh, Queens of Pain actually, even though they go, what is she, six and zero, four and zero, if they don't get their items up and they save a ton of gold, they can lose it. They can lose that momentum really quickly. 15 to 3, 12 minutes in. Queen of Pain. Point booster. Working towards an axe. Cheshire Cat. Getting some levels at that bottom lane while his uh, fellow compatriots pushing in that top lane. I've got Winter's Curse and they're moving up to top. I'm guessing a bad and plus. Uh... Clockwork. Oh no, Clock doesn't have a TP. They're moving up to fight, but without their best team fight ability. Clockwork's hookshot, it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, without, like, especially oh, wait, they if they know? just walk away. Power Rangers know, somehow. Yeah, J4. He's probably gonna be caught in the chains, or not. Sleep now, Ziz. He may end up dying here. I don't no, think the heal's gonna be enough. Is. Jesus. Yeah, that was definitely enough magic damage. They're going to keep on going because they have a Fiend script. They're going to be able to use on a Pinkfin check here. And Barash will join the rest of his team in taking that Templar Assassin down yet another notch. Damn. 17 to 3. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Rough stuff. Yeah, they've got Winter's Curse. They've got Hookshot. And it seems kind of weird that they smoke up two heroes to move top to try and guard the TA and... And play that game as Hookshot. Cheshire Cat, he's got a snowball, so he can delay his own death for a very long time, even if they were able to make some sort of commendal here. 
And now Swindle's going to be caught out. The Cheshire Cat waiting for the Ice Shards block out. We'll be able to get it on the ramp. Swindle quickly correcting his course, but will be caught out here. It looks like the nukes are still going to be enough, even with the heals. Not enough to save. Winter's Curse on a J4. Pinkman check is coming in, but here comes the Gyrocopter. He's going to get three Mad Ultimate here. Running down Pinkman check first is the Templar Assassin, priority number one, and Big Nup yeah. takes the rest. It's the humiliation. Just saw that Gyro coming in. I clicked on him right. He's got ult, he's got flak, he's got, oh god, he's got everything. They were grouped up so perfectly for the jar just to sideswipe and bring them all down. Ember, still alive up at top, but at, at this point, I cap. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's only the Bane who isn't ahead of everyone from Complexity and Net Worth. All of his other allies are actually ahead. It's not a it's not a great looking scenario for Complexity as uh, Barish turns around, goes for the kill on the Ziz. Forced out the Sonic Wave at the very least. Is it Axe upgrade yet? No, still not. No. Was... Queen of Pain, I, I think part of the problem is he hasn't actually been getting all the kills. Yeah. He's gotten a lot of assists in all these team fights, but he's not the one claiming the, the last hits. Uh, Swindle punched up in the air, and Jarcopter Ultimate. That's definitely another kill. TP in from the Abaddon is not going to be in time, that's for sure. 15 minute SNY helm with a face boots on Gyro. Bloody hell. 10 0 3. He doesn't care about creeps. He's got 83 CS, which isn't amazing for a gyro at this stage. You know, you're always looking at sort of uh, 110, 120, something like that. But big, big dump? Who's, who's he chasing? Z Freak just walking through the enemy jungle. All right, well, that's another kill. And we're just watching a massacre on our hands here. 23 to 3. As Arcade Power Rangers. They're just going to keep running at these heroes. Keep finding these pickoffs. They've got to be ahead. So 15,000 by 15 minutes. And it's been a steady increase, right? It had a little bit, a uh, little bit of a spike when when I first looked at it. Sort of six yeah. minutes in, the 4K, uh, the 4K jump. But then it's just been up, up, right. Another fiend grip. Swindle doesn't have anybody to stop this. This is ideally what the Abaddon is for. That aphotic shield can yeah. stop not only nightmare but as well as fiend's grip. Like <laughs> usually we see graphs like this. <clears throat> When people have a a solid farming lineup, right? They have that pressure push, they take tier one, tier one, tier one, they farm the jungle, farm enemy jungle, and we see the steady increase and the sort of regular acceleration of the net worth increase. But this hasn't been farming. This has been tier ones and fights. This has been Power Rangers just killing heroes over and over again. It's, uh, it's honestly amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, time to finish up that Ags before uh, Barish uses the next Sonic Wave. That's up in 15 seconds, but first, he needs 150 gold to get the Aghanim Scepter. Now he can throw that Sonic Wave around every 40 seconds. Complexity, sort of a desperation smoke on their hands right now. This is one of those, like, okay, this game's going real bad for us right now. We got to do something. We got to get a pickoff. Turn that into Roshan. And they're heading into the enemy jungle now, but the only thing they can really gank, it seems. So, um, yeah, they're going to get J4. Oh, Bane. Oh, uh, somebody save the courier, man. Somebody get the courier. All right. Oh, that's a, uh, that's a kill. Four-man smoke and a five-man rotation for a Bane. Yeah. It's not great, but I suppose it's a start when you're this far behind. Tron. The gyro still isn't unkillable. You know, if they uh, manage to take his streak, that's a ton of gold going to someone like the TA or the Ember Spirit. But at this stage, you know, we've seen Embers really struggle a lot of the time against these uh, these pressure fight lineups to actually get into the items. And when they do, the Battle Fury sometimes can just be that little bit too late. So you've got to go back and farm and build up into this. Oh, Swindle, this could be a good pick off. Irish doesn't have a blink up for another two seconds, or Swindle could just straight up die. He needs the Abiding Shield, he needs some heal, something. Barsh is going to end up going down here. Blink! Oh, he just barely gets out of there. Now here comes the rest of the hit Power Rangers catching complexity underneath their tower. The massacre is everyone from Cole may just end up dead here. Ziz, he's trying to get out as the last surviving member, but there's no escape, and GG is called complexity. Desperation smoke is indeed exactly what that was earlier because you could see they were on the, the precipice of calling it. This game was very one-sided and Complexity knew it. I can't remember the last time Cap I saw a game end without a single tier 2 tower falling. Wow. Usually, you know, we see GG's early when people mm -hmm. are knocking on the door of the tier 3s, threatening racks and things like that and it's like, okay, well, we can't rebuff this. We can't really get ourselves back into the game. We'll, we'll yeah. just call it, but... 
Power Rangers just slaughtered complexity. Yeah. And I think complexity, they just, they probably realized, okay, we made so many mistakes in the early game. Um, I, I can't really, like, I'm not sure if I want to fault the draft at all. It was just uh, a less simple, like, arcade Power Rangers had the early aggression on you, yep. and they executed it well, and they didn't, and complexity didn't really respond to it well. So you just get demolished that early on, and it's hard to see whether or not the draft could actually play out. So I can't really lay anything on that. Um, just. Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering because Oof. I really, I really thought the Clockwork would be a, a sort of pivotal hero in that. The fact that Hookshot could maybe save them in team fights and play reactively to things. Yeah, between him and the Ember Spirit, they yeah. have a certain amount of fighting power at 15 minutes. Maybe yeah. if they did like a bad and clock and left the Ember Spirit alone, mm. just to leech experience, because he wasn't really getting a, a large amount of farm anyway. Yeah, the Abend that was the really bad thing is that Abend as a hero can't shut out the Tusk. Yeah. So Tusk just had like all this experience. And then maybe Clockwork. A bad one could go and play more aggressively into the Lena plus Gyro, yeah. but I'd, you never know. Like that was that that was really rough for complexity. Yeah. But Maybe Ben wasn't the hero. All right, we'll have a short little break. We'll be back with game number two.